So we've already used angle measures to draw triangles and find our six trig functions, but using inverse trig functions for this process is really an art, and I'm hoping that through this video you're going to be able to grasp that art. So first, there's three things I want you to consider. One, what are your side ratios? Two, which quadrants are possible? And three, which of these lies in my range? Let's start by looking at sine inverse of one half. First off, my sine side ratios are opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. This would give me an opposite or y value of 1 and a hypotenuse or r value of 2. Second, we need to find which of the four quadrants we are to draw our triangle. And the key here is going to be looking at your y and x values. Here we, get, we have a positive y value of 1. We know our positive y axis is on the upper part of our coordinate plane. So our two triangles options are either in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. And third, we know that sine, in the range of sine, we have values from negative pi over 2, which would be uh, this, the negative y-axis, all the way to positive pi over 2, which would be this positive y-axis. So all our options for sine lie in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. So, therefore, because this quadrant is, does not lie within the range of pi, we, our only option to draw our triangle is in quadrant 1. Now that we know where our triangle is to be drawn in quadrant 1, let's go ahead and do that. So our opposite side, remember our angle is going to be always with the x-axis, our opposite side is 1, our hypotenuse is 2, and if you think back to your special right triangles, this is going to be one of our uh, 30, 60, 90 triangles, this is going to have to be square root of 3. Based on this, we know that this angle of theta here is going to have to be a 30 degree angle, a 30 degree angle or a pi over 6. Okay, here we have cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. Now remember, we talked about how we can unrationalize this because it's going to be a little bit easier for us to work with. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to give us cosine inverse of negative 1 over the square root of 2. Again, remember, these are the same thing, but you'll see why this is going to be a little bit easier for us to make our triangle. First, we have our adjacent, or x value, is negative 1, and our hypotenuse, our r value, is the square root of 2, because cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now, notice I put this negative with a 1 instead of the square root of 2, because the r, the hypotenuse, always has to be positive. Second, let's find our possible quadrants. We see our x value is negative 1, so I know I have to be on the negative x-axis. That leaves us with options of quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. Based on the range of cosine, from 0 to pi, 0 is here, pi is here, so from 0 to pi, we have to draw our triangle. That only leaves us an option of quadrant 2. So, drawing our triangle, we'll choose quadrant 2. We've got an x value, an adjacent of negative 1, uh, r value of square root of 2, and... Thinking of our special right triangles, I can see that this is going to be a 1, 1, square root of 2, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So my reference angle will be 45 degrees, or pi over 4. And there we have our triangle. Let's try this one. We've got arc tangent root 3 over 3. Remember, this arc just means tangent inverse. I went ahead and changed this to arc tangent 1 over square root of 3, just like we did in the last one, except with 1 over root 3. Our sides we have with tangent are the opposite over adjacent, or y over x. That leaves us with 1 over the square root of 3, or negative 1 over negative square root of 3, right? Because a negative over a negative is a positive, so we can't leave out that possibility. Keeping that in mind, our quadrants have to be either where both y and x values are positive. That would be in quadrant 1, positive y, positive x, or where both y and x values are negative, that would be quadrant 3, negative x and negative y. Keeping in mind the range of tangent from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, it must be quadrant 1. So drawing our triangle in quadrant 1, we have an opposite side of 1, an adjacent side of square root of 3. This reminds, of, reminds us that 
This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This should be two up here. And because our opposite is one, that's our smaller of the 30, 60, 90, this should be a 30 degree angle or a pi over six. And there we've got our triangle. Let's consider some special cases. Here we have sine inverse of one. I change this to one over one because it's gonna help me organize my side ratios. That gives me an opposite or y value of one and a hypotenuse or an r value of one. Remember where we have this one one value is actually at the pi over two mark, right? Because at pi over two, say remember we had a point here that might be like 0, 1, we had an x value of 0, a y value of 1, and an r value of 1. So in this case, we can't draw a triangle. We just have to know that this lines us right up on the pi over 2 axis. This example, cosine inverse negative 1, I changed to negative 1 over 1. We've got our adjacent x value of negative 1 and our hypotenuse r value of 1. This, like the last one, lands on an axis. This time, at pi, because we've got an x of negative 1 at the point negative 1, 0, y of 0, that would give us an r value of 1, which is exactly what we need. So this one would lie on the pi axis, and again, we can't draw a triangle, we just need to know where it's located. All right, so here we have sine inverse of 5. I change this to 5 over 1, giving me an opposite y value of 5, and a hypotenuse r value of 1. I pick quadrant 1 because it has a y a positive y-axis, and it also lies within the range of pi from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This gives me an opposite side of 5 and a hypotenuse of 1. Now, wait a minute, what's this? Our hypotenuse is a length of 1, but our opposite has a length of 5. But our hypotenuse should be our longest side length. Okay, well, this is nonsense. This does not exist. This is impossible, okay? And if you went back to your chart and you checked what is the range of, I mean the domain of sine, you'd notice that the domain of sine is from negative 1 to 1, and 5 is well without, well outside of that range. So be careful. Sometimes your values might not exist. A good clue is when your hypotenuse is longer than a different side.